case study on ATM transaction. So, let us discuss some case studies so that you can get an idea that how these systems from the very problem statement to the implementation can be done and what are the steps in between. So, in this particular case study, we have drawn different diagrams, UML diagrams depending upon the problem statement and also we have shown you that how to draw such diagrams using rational rows software. Please watch all the videos on this case study. So, now at first let us discuss the problem statement. Software is to be designed for supporting a computerized ATM banking network. All the processes involved in the bank are computerized. Accounts maintained in the bank, the transactions affected and including ATM transactions are to be processed step by step by the computers in the bank. An ATM machine accepts ATM card. So, now we are discussing in the problem statement how one can deposit or withdraw money using the ATM card. So, an ATM machine accepts ATM card, validates the PIN and verifies the password and interacts with the user and communicates with the central system to carry out the transaction, dispenses and deposits cash and prints receipts of the transaction history. So, this is a part of the problem statement. So, let us let us have some uh, rest part of the problem statement. So, the invalid pin of the card is rejected. The system to be designed and implemented must include appropriate record keeping and security provisions. The proposed system must satisfy the user requirements. The system should be user friendly and derive usability and also it should give the quality assurance. So, this is the problem statement we are having here. So, here is one diagram to show you that this is a central computer, these are the bank computers, they are connected with some computer communication network and with the central computer ATMs are connected with these bank computers where having the different accounts are getting connected, there is a cash, cash counter, these are the different customers who will be using them. So, just one pictorial representation of this the problem whatever we have discussed. So, I think we have gone through the problem statement. So, now we are going to have two sections now. One is a functional requirement, another one is a non-functional requirement. So, through this discussion also you will be having the idea what is the difference between functional and non-functional requirements. So, functional requirements. So, details of the transaction. If the bank client must be able to deposit or withdraw an amount to or from his account using the ATM counters. Each transaction has to be re recorded and the client must be able to review all transactions performed in his system or accounts. All the transactions include the following details. So, that is a bank client account, date, time and type of transactions made, amount and account balance after the transaction. So, all this detailing is required. So, that is our details of the transaction. So, let us go for another functional requirement on validate bank client. Access to the bank account through ATM card is validated by a PIN code which has been mentioned in the problem statement also. The length of the PIN code is the numeric digit of length 4. So, that means we will be having 4 digits in the PIN code. Next one, next functional requirement, there is a third requirement, account to be, the amount to be withdrawn. The bank in consultation with the client shall fix the amount that can be or can be withdrawn on a specific day. That means, uh, depending upon the account type, the bank authority and the client, so they must be having some consultation and they will decide what is the amount that can be withdrawn in maximum for a certain day. Next one is the cross withdrawal limit. The system should be designed such that it automatically checks the amount in the account of the client. If the amount to be withdrawn exceeds the amount in the account of the client, then it should check whether the client could avail the overdraft facility or not as per the bank rules to enable the transaction. So, sometimes it may happen that amount which is going to be withdrawn is 
greater than the amount which is there in the account balance. So, in that case we shall have to check whether the overdraft facility is available on that account or not and accordingly the transactions will be will have the success. Now, this is these are the non functional requirements. So, what about the functional requirements we discussed? So, let me revise once. So, that is the details of the transaction what are the what are the attributes that should be kept as the details of the transaction and then validate the bank client. So, how to check whether the client is valid or not through the password through the four digit pin and so on. And next functional requirement was that that is the amount to be withdrawn what is the amount the client can withdraw in maximum per day and then cross withdrawal limit. So, what is the withdrawal limit whether the account is having the overdraft facilities or not. So, here we have discussed these are the functional requirements. So, now let us go for the non functional requirements. So, system should be designed simple enough to enable the user to operate without any formal training or any kind of delay. System must be secured and protected from unauthorized users. So, in the problem statement we have we have uh, discussed that the system should be user friendly, the system should be uh, the quality assurance should be ensured, the system should be secured. So, they are mentioning all this in the in a in non functional requirements in some specific points. So, system must handle the card stack up network and power failure. Software must be efficient to use and provide quick recover from the fault. Software must validate and cancel operation of incorrect pin, incomplete transaction, insufficient fund, time delay and return failure. And user interface screen must be designed to operate easily, it should be user friendly and it should have visual appealing. So, these are the non functional requirements. So, you are getting this idea that whenever a problem in our real life scenario, when we will be working for a certain project, the problem statement will be given and then we shall have to derive the functional requirements and the non functional requirements. So, you are getting this idea that how the real life projects can be handled. So, please watch next videos they are in the continuation of this discussion. Thanks for watching this.